Uh, we thank all of you for being here uh, to the Ruth Scott Training Center, or as it is called by our women's volleyball and basketball players, the Ruth. We had over 130 donors to this facility, and while every one of you is important, it is impossible for us to personally recognize every one of you. But without each and every one of you, this facility does not exist. Uh, I think it's a very powerful statement as to the need of this facility that we had over 130 donors that believed in the need for this facility. And without a large number of people willing to go beyond their jobs and their families and make a commitment to this facility, or in reality to make a commitment to any of our facilities or any part of our athletics department, the Ruth does not exist and our athletics department as a Division I program does not exist. I would also like to thank Leo Daly uh, for designing and MCL for building this amazing facility. We thank you very much. I would also like to uh, thank Steve Brace and Brandon McCarville from our staff for overseeing the construction of this facility. I now would like to introduce Reverend Daniel Hendrickson, SJ, the 25th president of Creighton University, to make a few remarks. Father Hendrickson became president of Creighton University in July of 2015, just three and a half years ago. And his impact on Creighton and the Omaha community has been spectacular. We continue to grow our undergraduate and graduate enrollment improve our facilities, and dramatically impact the lives of families, businesses, and the entire community. Father Hendrickson. It's wonderful to see so many friends and supporters here this afternoon, and I join Bruce in welcoming members of our Board of Trustees, members of the Athletic Board, members of the Jay Backer Executive Board, so many of our deans, our faculty, staff, and Jesuits from the Creighton community, and also so many wonderful guests from the Omaha community. This is such a happy and historic day for our women's teams, coaches, and administrators who have waited patiently for this moment. This day would not be possible without the generosity of many, as Bruce was referencing. Thank you to our loyal donors and to our friends for your really important support and vision of Creighton Athletics. I applaud you for your vision of a better experience for our student athletes and for your willingness to get behind the vision with such important financial support. You know how to make it happen. Of course, first among this group are our very good friends, Bill and Ruth Scott. Let's thank the Scotts and their family and all of our donors one more time for their incredible generosity for this facility. The Ruth Scott Training Center, now known as the Ruth, fits perfectly into our East Campus Athletics Corridor. It now takes its place alongside the Championship Center, the Rasmussen Center, the Ryan Athletic Center in DJ Sokol Arena, and Morrison Stadium. We feel so incredibly blessed here at the university. Opening the doors to the Ruth put so many positive developments into play. It will give our women student athletes another practice facility, relieving the stress we place on the DJ Sokol Arena. Now the volleyball and women's basketball teams can practice simultaneously, enhancing their experience as student athletes, as well as supporting the coaches in their good work. It will help us maintain a standard of excellence we committed to when we joined the Big East Conference by helping us recruit new student athletes, coaching staff, and personnel and it will provide another venue that our university can share with university partners. On the court, you will notice four names of people who have had an incredible impact on the women's athletics programs here at Creighton University. Bruce Rasmussen, Connie Yori, Kirsten Bernthal Booth, and Jim Flannery. I would also like to thank Jim and Kathy Simpson for their generous support of the facility. Jim and Kathy approached us about recognizing these four people for their contributions, and we agreed readily their contributions have been truly significant. It's great to have their names grace our court. 
Since Creighton joined the Big East Conference in 2013, the Blue Jays have captured hearts across the nation. Our student athletes represent Creighton well, and it makes me so incredibly proud. Our men's and women's teams not only exhibit large amounts of talent and skill, but a great deal of sportsmanship also. They excel as scholars and as service-minded in service individuals who find time to give back to the community, often at about five or 6,000 hours of service a given year from our student athletes right here in Omaha. Creighton student athletes across all sports are outstanding individuals who never hesitate to accept the challenge to do more and to be more. It's not easy to excel at Division I competition. There are so many demands on time, not to mention physical exhaustion, but they certainly find the way to do it. They deserve outstanding facilities like the Ruth to help them develop their gifts to the best of their abilities. Thank you to everyone who has made a commitment to this facility. Your investment in our student athletes and our women's programs will have an impact on countless individuals, the campus, and the local community. As always, Creighton will be a good steward of your gifts as we build the academic and athletic champions of tomorrow. Next, I will turn it over to one of our outstanding student athletes. Please join me in welcoming a senior on the Creighton volleyball, volleyball team, Megan Ballinger, to the stage. Thank you, everyone. Well, hello, everyone. Welcome. Um, thank you for joining us in this day of celebration. Please excuse my voice. I'm a little under the weather for the past few days, um, but hopefully um, this still delivers as well as I hoped it would. Um, first of all, thank you to Bill and Ruth Scott. Um, obviously, a huge, huge impact is felt in the Omaha community from both of you, um, so we thank you for that. Um, I'd also like to thank so many other generous donors that helped really bring this facility to life. Um, truly, without you, we would not be here in this building. Um, it's incredible to see the impact that all of you have made. Um, it is especially empowering that this facility will be known as the Ruth, um, as Ruth Scott is just a champion for women, and we as young female student athletes look up to her um, and the impact she has had. Um, this name will just forever live on as new female student athletes arrive to campus, knowing that this facility has been designed specifically with them in mind. This, the addition of this space really does give us freedom to train when we want um, and more frequently than we could before. Um, it really takes care of a lot of the hassle that comes from scheduling um, and it just makes our lives easier as students also, making more time to meet with professors, um, group projects, kind of branch outside, do community service and our other free time. I cannot stress how grateful we are that our university prioritizes female student athletes, driving us to be the best versions of ourselves. Our amazing facilities with the addition of this building, the Ruth, sets us apart from so many institutions. But beyond that, the incredible support of our administration, coaching staff, and support staff is really second to none. They make it known that we as female student athletes can do whatever we set our minds to, and that's really special, and I'll carry that with me forever. Over the past four years, I have had several opportunities that are not afforded to all female student athletes across the country. I've traveled to almost every single part of this country. I've even traveled internationally with my Creighton family. Um, and I will forever remember hosting NCAA tournaments, winning Big East championships, and selling out DJ Sokol Arena, just to name a few. I don't take this for granted and know that this is not an experience that's afforded to everyone across the country. Um, it's largely from the support of people like you and the concentrated effort of our athletic department. So thank you again um, to Bill and Ruth Scott and so many other generous donors that helped bring this vision to life. Um, this space truly is a game changer for both of our programs and we'll do our best um, to utilize it. We're honored to represent Creighton Volleyball and Creighton University and we will do our best to make you all proud. Thank you. Thank you, Megan. I know it's been touched on by both Father and Megan, but just give you an example of uh, the need for this facility. Uh, the DJ Sokol Arena, which is a beautiful facility across the street. Last year, we had over 110 days in which it was scheduled for events other than volleyball and women's basketball. Not only campus events, but community events is one of the reasons why we needed this building. To introduce our basketball and volleyball coaches, Jim Flannery came to Creighton in 1983 as a student. 
That's over 35 years ago. And he served the women's basketball program in a number of ways. He started out back when I was coaching as a uh, student practice player, then a volunteer assistant, then became a graduate assistant, then became a full-time assistant, and was named the head coach in 2012, 17 years ago. Kirsten came to Creighton as the head women's volleyball coach in 2003, 16 years ago, I think at the age of 15. <laughs> but both Kirsten and Flan coach with great passion, with great intelligence, and with high character. We never have to uh, worry or be concerned about how they represent themselves, their program, the university, the community. They are great teachers of the game. Uh, and yet, if that's all they are doing is teaching basketball and volleyball to our young women, then they're not doing the mission of Creighton. I want and they want our volleyball players and our basketball players when they graduate to be better leaders in their families, in their businesses, in their communities. And I know of no two coaches that do a better job of this. So Flan and Kirsten, come forward. I too would like to thank Ruth and Bill and the over 130 donors who have helped make this building a reality. Um, when I think back to 35 years ago and, and what uh, was available for female student athletes, it's, uh, it's amazing that, that this facility and the facility across the street stand here today. So um, from the bottoms of, of our hearts, um, and, and our current student athletes and future stu student athletes, uh, thank you for thank you for the impact that you're that you're making today and and the impact that you're going to make uh, going forward. I want to tell you two quick stories, and Glenn will tell you I never tell a quick story, but I'm going to try to make them quick. The first happened on Saturday uh, when we got to the gym at Villanova, and Vill Villanova has just refurbished their pavilion, uh, sixty million dollars, I think, really nice. Um, did a great job, and we were met by their uh, facilities, one of their facilities coordinators, when we got in there. And I just start, struck up a conversation with him as I'm waiting for our players to get stretched out, get their shoes on. And uh, he said to me, as he was talking about the refurbishment, he goes, you know, you guys are our model when it comes to facilities. Creighton, we look at you guys. Um, and we try to be like you. <laughs> and I thought, <laughs> he kept talking, but I'm, in my mind, I'm like, wait a minute. You know, this school has won two of the last three national championships in men's basketball, and we're their model for athletic facilities. And I think that's obviously a tribute to everybody here, okay, who's made that a reality. Um, but, but, but just to hear that kind of blows me away. And the second, the second story also happened this weekend, but it happens every time that we get on a bus. And that is, <clears throat> Coach Service is here. Coach, um, I've heard about how you sit on a bus, and that's at the front, um, which is where you sit when you're the old guy, um, and no one wants to be around you, and that's where I have to sit. And <laughs> so I'm right there when, when our players get on and off the bus. And now that we're exposed to the East Coast, our, the bus drivers, as our players file off, every time they fall, file off, every single one of them, every single time they file off, says thank you. And so the first time it happens, you know, they're kind of giggly. The bus driver's kind of giggly. And the second time, you know, I'm right there. I can see them kind of smiling, and they get gigglier. And that's the same <laughs> reaction I get from every single bus driver of every road trip that we've ever had. Because every single player, when they walk off the bus, says thank you every time. And they're not used to that, right? Okay, partly because they're from the East Coast, but partly because <laughs> <clears throat> that just doesn't happen everywhere. And, and Linda and Chevy and I had uh, breakfast with our bus driver uh, the other day and he talked about he doesn't carry professional teams anymore because he couldn't stand the way he got treated 
by professional athletes, um, not Creighton, Creighton professional athletes, but by professional athletes in general. But my point is, you ought to be pretty proud of, of who, you, who you put the, you know, the impact that you're making the type of, the type of student athlete who's representing you. So for all of those of you who gave to this project and to every project on our campus, um, I, I, I don't think you could be prouder of the way that they represent you when, when you're on the road. The fact that they make an impact on a bus driver, that they make an impact on a server in restaurants is something that, that I can tell you that I'm extremely proud of. And I wish to heck I didn't have to stand up here and talk to you after losing four games in a row, but I'm still really, really, really proud of my team, and I know Kirsten feels the same way. So um, th that's, that's, what, that's, what, that's what this is about. It's about giving opportunity to kids who do things the right way, who treat people the right way, and um, just extremely appreciative of every single one of you. I do want to thank people within, we've, we've talked about the people who, who've made, a, made an impact from outside our department, but uh, it also wouldn't be possible without Father Hendrickson, without Rass, whose, whose name is over there because he was a great coach, but also because he's a great athletic director and he's, he, he does so many things to make this, this place go. And uh, my boss, Brandy, and assistant athletic director, Roe, over there, um, and on down the line. And I'm lucky to work alongside one of the best coaches in the country in any sport. Um, and, and we have coaches back there, uh, facilities, people. Um, but just, a, just an incredible, incredible place to work because you're surrounded by excellence every day. So when you come to work, you want to be good at you want to be really good at what you do because every time you look around you're seeing people who are really good at what they do and uh, that's all I got without without uh, without further ado uh, the best volleyball coach in the country Kirsten. Everyone internally knows that if Flan says anything about me, he's usually slamming me. <laughs> so, uh, but I, um, I want to echo, we're trying not to double up, but all those thanks, I want to say thank you to, particularly to you guys. Not only, and you know, Bill and Ruth not only have been the lead donor to this and other things around our campus and around Omaha, but they sit behind our bench for every single volleyball game. And that I know means a great deal to our players that you guys are invested in not only supporting, but being, you know, on the wins and the losses too. So thank you for that. So I'm, I'm kind of uh, been given the task of uh, explaining how this is really going to impact things. So a couple things that I think are really important to point out, and Megan alluded to this when she spoke, is, you know, I think being on a smaller campus, uh, you know, we've got 4,500 students, which means a lot of our class times overlap. A lot of our athletes are in the same classes. So what we run into is Flan wants to practice at 3.30 every day, and men's basketball wants to practice at 3.30 every day, and women's volleyball wants to practice at 3.30 every day, and we had two facilities. And so it led to, a lot of compromise, uh, I mean, I think the good thing is we've got great people that we, we tried to work on it, but it didn't lead to ideal situations. So, you know, might, might be cutting practices short, you may have to go in the morning, you know, we're in the off season right now, they're in season, so they can practice when they want, and so we'd be hodgepodging, kind of taping times together to get in the gym. And now, uh, team sitting right there, we can come in when we want, and, and practice, and it's been so nice this spring that we've already had that luxury to do it. So, so things like that, making, you know, Megan talked about making it so much easier on the student athlete um, is huge. Another big thing is recruiting. You know, everyone has talked about the commitment that women, that Creighton has made to women's athletics. You don't think we talk about that to every single recruit that walks in because we do care about women's athletics. It's one of the reasons Flan and I have stayed here is that we know our fans, our administration, care about women's athletics. We are not just a side thing that they have to do because of Title IX. We are doing it because we're building strong women and we believe in women's athletics here. And I think that's really powerful and you know we've got these facilities to back it up. I mean, DJ Sokol Arena is one of the few ground-up facilities for women's athletics in the country. 
Most people get hand-me-down facilities if they have their own facility. We built a facility for women's athletics. We built a gym for women's athletics. It's, it's pretty amazing. Uh, summer training, so now uh, teams are allowed to train. Yeah, women's basketball and, and men's basketball can train in the summer. It looks like other sports may be going that direction. We're actually voting on that. So these gyms are big for that because the other thing going on in the summer are camps. And so we've got gym issues in the summer, so that's going to lead to uh, accessibility then. That's huge. Within this facility, I wanted to point out a few really cool things that we're excited about. So the nets, we set the net system up. Can you find the other volleyball net? It's right above you. So all most net systems, you have the whole, you put the, these big poles, players, you guys could demonstrate it. They carry these big poles out that you almost need two people. I don't ever lift them because I would drop them. And it's, it's laborious. I mean, it takes, uh, if one person did it, it's probably a 20-minute job. If a team does it, we can do it in about five minutes. But it's, you know, not to complain, but it's, it's, a, it's a job. And it also leads that if a kid wants to come in on their own and serve, they're probably not going to do it because it's hard to set up a net. While a basketball player, you guys can push a button, and they can come in and shoot on their own. Now we can push a button. And so players can come down here if they want to work uh, just on their serve, if there's two of them and they want to come in and serve and pass, or setters want to come in. There's a luxury that we've never had, and very few programs in the country have this, that you can push a button and set up a net. So that's been uh, pretty incredible. Um, Little things, uh, Steve Brace uh, standing over there. Hi, Steve, perfect spot. That gray line, the top of that gray line is the height of a volleyball net. So our players, if we want to work serving against a wall, Naomi Hickman just the other day did blocking footwork up against that wall. So there's some things that we've put in um, to, make it, to make it great. Right above those guys, you guys want to wave? They're demonstrating where the video board is. So that video board has a time delay. There's lots of things we can do in it. But right now, what we're using it for is there's about a 10-second delay on what we're doing so a player can pass a couple balls and immediately watch that and see form. So if we're getting right now, we're in small group training, so we're able to give immediate feedback, and that video board does that. Finally, the floor itself. So you've got our TerraFlex right there, which thank you, Jane, and so many other donors that are sitting here today that we got this season, which has been huge in our, so we lay that during our games, but we're gonna be able to lay that for our players to play on in the spring and have it down. And then underneath it, one thing that I, I'm so thankful we've made a commitment to in, in DJ Sokol and in the Champ Center and now here is we buy the best floors available. And I can tell you our injury rate, and I'm nervous saying this, has gone down dramatically since we moved from the old gym to here because we have top of the line floors. So, <laughs> sorry, <laughs> women's basketball hasn't had as much luck, but, uh, but we have had, so I, you know, the floor is really, really important and the cushioning that's underneath it and things like, maybe you should plan TerraFlex. Have you considered that? So, um, so those are just some of the things that make this incredible. And, uh, I, you know, I echo, you saw Megan. I mean, Megan represents the, vo the basketball program, our program. I mean, these are amazing young, young women. I always, I mean, I, our teams hang out. Um, I can't tell you how highly I think of them as people. So, um, you know, we're just trying to not mess them up during their four years here. And hopefully they uh, are going to go out and change the world when they're done. So. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you to so many others of you, and um, we're just really appreciative of this uh, amazing facility. Thank you, Flan. Thank you, Kirsten. I think we can see why uh, both of them are so successful. Uh, much has been said already about Bill and Ruth Scott. However, I feel compelled to speak for a few minutes about our lead donors uh, at the expense of possibly getting the one-finger salute from Ruth, uh, I want to explain to you why this building being named the Ruth is so appropriate. Uh, first of all, I don't want to slight Bill, uh, who has been an amazingly generous person, and I am very proud to call a friend. <coughs> the name William, or Bill, the name William means fierce protector. And I know of no one more aptly named than Bill Scott because he has been a fierce protector of his family, 
of the community and of the area. No one has been more generous in giving to basically every needy cause in the area than Bill and Ruth Scott. <clears throat> and while we're going to the dictionary, let's look up the word Ruth in the dictionary. It says big heartedness, charity, friend, companion. And for those that know Ruth, this is a very accurate description of her. And hopefully all of our coaches and all of our student athletes will take that name to heart and represent the Ruth in the way that they show caring and compassion and love for each other and for others. I've gotten to know the entire Scott family, many who are here today, and uh, I'm proud to call each of them a friend. Ruth and Bill have not only done an amazing job with their own family, they have had an unbelievable impact on generations of students and student athletes, not only at Creighton, but at a lot of other places in the community and in the area because of their generosity. Their impact on Creighton has been dynamic. We talked about the facilities. Uh, they uh, not only come to volleyball and basketball games, but they were they have contributed and made a commitment to DJ Sokol Arena, to the Wayne and Eileen Ryan Athletic Center, to the Rasmussen Center, to the Championship Center, to the Women's Basketball and Volleyball Lounge, and now to the Ruth. They are tremendous examples of the impact that a, a family can have by reaching out to others and say, I believe in you, I care for you, how can I help? I love you. Uh, when I think of them, I think of a quote from James Michener, uh, the Nobel Prize author, who said this, the masters in the art of living make little distinction between their work and their play, their labor and their leisure, their mind and their body, their information and their recreation, their love and their religion. They hardly know which is which. They simply pr pursue their vision of excellence at whatever they do and let others decide whether they are working or playing. To them, they are always doing both. In Paul's letter to the city of Corinth, he said, whoever sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. And whoever sows generously will, will also reap generously. Each man should give in proportion uh, to his desire, not under compulsion, but as he desires. For God loves a cheerful giver. I know of no more cheerful givers than Bill and Ruth Scott. Uh, I wouldn't say, Ruth, I've heard Ruth say this often. She says, uh, money is like manure. It does little good unless you spread it around. I don't know where, where, where that is in Paul's letter to Corinth, but I, <laughs> but I do know this. It's from the book of Ruth. <laughs> so I'd like to bring Bill and Ruth Scott up here. I just want to thank all the volleyball girls <clears throat> for all the hours of fun we have watching you play. Uh, when we go to the volleyball banquet, we're very impressed with your four-point averages, your 3.9, 3.8, 3.7. And I'm so happy that you've got one button to push and practice your serves. <laughs> so I'm hoping that next season when we come, there'll be no more serves in the net <laughs> and no more long serves. We're tired of those, so practice every day. Pushing that button. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much.
Almighty God, we gather today with prayers of gratitude and generosity of many. We are grateful for the mission of Creighton University that calls us to develop our gifts, and we are grateful for those who walk with us in that mission. We are grateful for the athletic traditions that have taken root over the years, and we welcome new traditions that will develop through our women's athletic teams. Thank you, Father, for facilities that inspire our student athletes to do their best. Let the Ruth be a blessing in their lives and inspire their overall well-being and develop their minds, their bodies, and spirits. Even as we thank you for this outstanding facility, keep us ever mindful that it is even more important that our student athletes become outstanding people. We ask you to bless all who influence their lives, coaches and administrators in every sport, faculty and staff and departments throughout this campus, and alumni, friends, and benefactors who inspire them. Let each teach them by example of dedication, leadership, and ethical behavior. Help them to influence our student athletes in positive ways through their successes as well as their futures. Lord, as the country follows Creighton University athletics, let them see the wider Creighton community actively and joyfully carrying out the mission of Jesuit education to change lives for the better. Let us dedicate the Ruth Scott Training Center in the Ignatian tradition of Magis that continually inspires us to do more and to be more for the benefit of our current student athletes and all who will follow. Lord, we give you praise without ceasing. You rule over all things with wonderful order. You temper our cares and responsibilities. And by giving us rest and healthy recreation, you refresh us. We entreat your kindness that this place and its facilities will serve your people well. Grant that all who work and play here may find the enrichment of companionship and together offer you the praise that is your due. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Thank <laughs> you.